Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel, What the Back. Hey! <laughs> Today I'm going to be doing a video inspired by Breathing Yarn, who you can find linked in the description below. Um, I also did my makeup for you guys today, so um, you better leave me a comment. It doesn't have to be about the makeup, but I put extra effort in today, so you're welcome. <laughs> but the main uh, purpose of this video is to go over my knit and crochet bucket list. Um, I kind of framed it as if it was for this year, but it's kind of more just like the next steps for like when I want to challenge myself or um, like goals for garments and things that I want to make and yeah let's just get into it so the first one I actually started on already was this shawl pattern um, and I kind of discovered that I really like shawls um, because they're basically a blankie that you can wear at work and then people will be like oh that's beautiful did you make it and I'll be like yes and then when it's cold I get to put that on and people are like oh that's so beautiful did you make it and I'll be like yes and then I won't be cold. So <laughs> this is my pattern so far. I'm taking a lot of inspiration from Lindsay George uh, from LG Fiberworks. She has a bunch of amazing patterns that use um, two strands of color changing yarn. And in this case, I'm using Lion Brand Mandala Baby yarn. Um, but she also uses a lot of different stitches and things. And I like that whenever I work on one of her patterns, I don't get bored. So I wanted to try making my own, but like a shawl. So right now I would say this is about two and a half feet across. Um, and I want to at least use up both of these cakes in it. So, uh, that there's like hardly any waste. I want to leave a little bit of room for error or like if your gauge is a little looser, then you'd still be able to make it. Um, but the goal is only two cakes to make a really cool shawl. Um, and the main goal with this one is just to like make patterns that aren't just amigurumi because I haven't done a ton of those just yet. Um, you see my dragon back there. He's my most uh, impressive and like fancy amigurumi pattern and I want to do more of those too but I really like wearing the stuff I make so I figure I'll make something that I like and then write up the pattern and then I can sell that as well. So the next set of items is tank tops and I'm not entirely sure about this one anymore but um, back when it was still snowing I made a tank top in these colors um, for like gay pride. Um, it doesn't fit me super well. I might like modify this, um, but I also wanted to, I had this like big idea that I would replace most of my tank tops with handmade ones. Cause I have some that I really like and I like that they're like ribbed around the body. <laughs> um, so they fit really nicely and they're comfortable but the ones I have, the shoulder straps don't fit me very well. So I was like, well, if I make it myself, then I don't even have to worry about the shoulder straps um, and the weird bunching that happens. Um, I have very thin shoulders too, so I don't need as wide of a strap as some people do. Um, so my original idea, and it's really cute, I even did a little drawing here, is a watermelon tank top. But as you can see, I didn't have enough of this yarn to go all the way down um, to where the green would start, which would be like here. And I went to like five different stores near here and near my mom's house and near work and they didn't have this color anymore. So I made it into a gay pride tank top, which is honestly a win and I will definitely be wearing this in the summer, whether it's in the house or out of the house, depending on who all wants to stay in the confines of this shaped garment, um, is like, that's, that's not something I can really control until I modify it. Um, but I do want to try making more like summery knits or crochet pieces to wear. Um, and yeah, just the, the tank tops. I have one of those um, really comfortable white ones and a really comfortable black one. 
but the problem is the straps. So if I could replace those with something that I made, that would be pretty poggers. My next little sketch here that I have is a cable sweater. Um, this is directly inspired by Breathing Yarn. I'm so sorry, I forgot your name. I'll put it on the screen. Um, but they made a cable sweater that really inspired me to try it. I mean, I've, I've made cables on hats and things before, but nothing like a fully cable sweater. Um, and I have this red yarn. I have six balls of this, which are actually 12 smaller balls. And they are DK weight, which is not something I use a ton of, but I do have a lot of it. So I'm trying to use up what I have. And I think that this color would be really pretty as a cable uh, sweater. And then when it comes to be like Christmas time, I could literally just sew some <laughs> jingle bells onto buttons and then like button through the stitches and have like a cute jingle bell ensemble for like holiday events. So that's my like big sweater idea. I also have these, which are Karen Cloud Cakes. Whoops have two of them in the color Lagoon um, and they're very soft. They're like way softer than the other Karen Cakes since the OG ones they don't feel as soft which I don't like. Um, but I have two of these and I think that's enough to knit something with it. I also had the idea that I want to try doing a lace-ish project so nothing like super fantastic or elegant or crazy but just something other than stockinette stitch because while I do love it I want to like expand my skills you know so I have two of these I want to see if that turns into either like a sweater or some type of cardigan maybe it depends on however much yardage is in these um, because I'll definitely be following someone else's pattern for that and not making it up as I go because I don't even know how to do lace in the first place my next little goal is to make more socks. I made, I think, two or three pairs of socks last year. Um, and then I got into hand dyeing yarn. <laughs> so I dyed some yarn that I specifically wanted to make socks with. And I actually have, I think, five pairs of knitted socks now that I've made. Um, some of them I haven't worn yet because I'm trying to keep them pristine for when they go in the fair this summer and then I'm going to be wearing the heck out of them. Um, but this is one of the ones I made. I specifically tried to use up all the yardage of the hand dyed yarn that I dyed myself. Um, so they're pretty long but I actually really prefer the longer socks especially when they're made of wool. This one is not, uh, doesn't have a cup on it just yet. but so cool it looks like a galaxy i also have a video about how i dyed this yarn if you want to watch that um you can just scroll back on my page because i don't feel like linking a million things i'm so sorry <laughs> um but yeah my goal for this year was to make more socks and i already did my sock drawer is kind of full so i think i need to like go and see which ones are at the end of their lifespan and like upcycle them or like turn them into cat toys <laughs> and then I'll have more room to put these um but yeah part of it was just that I didn't have room to put them in there so I was like okay stop making socks I have like four or five balls of yarn that I've either dyed or bought specifically to make socks with and I'm just gonna have to wait a little bit because I don't need any more socks right now until I get that sort of out but yes more socks <laughs> I'm realizing how many sweaters are on this list. Um, I think this is the last one. Yeah, I think so. Um, I want to make a sweater that is this color. You might be saying, Beck, you are wearing that color. Yes, but this says, stay salty. And this one will have little confetti rainbow bobbles all over it. <laughs> um, basically, some people will watch a show and say, oh my god, I love that this anime character is wearing that. I want Tanjiro's coat or whatever. I don't typically do that. I see something made at like Target and then I'm like, I am not paying $25 for that. I would rather pay $20 for yarn and make it myself. <laughs> um, but because I have like a stash of yarn 
and I always use coupons, always use coupons for yarn. Um, it ends up being more like $10-$15, um, plus it occupies me and it calms my ADHD. So technically I'm getting more mental health out of making it than buying it. Um, and I'm also not trying to spend a ton of money and in general, so if making it cost me $20 and a month, then that's better than buying it instantly and then having that money be gone, so, <laughs> and hit no mental health from it. Uh, but yes, I want to make one of them. I'm going to see if I can find a picture of it to put on the screen. I also want to make a well-fitted, colorful hat. I showed a gray hat that I had made while I was in high school on one of my previous videos um, where I like went through the stuff from my parents' house that I evacuated. Um, well, like we didn't have to evacuate. I evacuated all my old stuff out of it. Um, and it fits really good and I love the pattern and I actually was able to track down the pattern. So here's that if you wanna make a similar hat. Um, but I wanna make one with really cool colors that I love and possibly hand dyed yarn. I'm kind of taking a break on that for now because I'm trying to use the yarn I have and in order to dye yarn I have to buy light colored yarn and buying yarn is not using yarn. Um, but I want to make maybe like, I don't know, I my instinct is to make it rainbow but maybe I should do like mostly one color with like a hint of rainbow in it somewhere. Um, so we'll see what happens with that, but I want to make one of those hats that fits really well so that when next winter comes along, I have a cool cabled hat with colors on it that isn't just gray. A lot of these are just like specific work in progresses, like this one says finish this blanket, finish this blanket, <laughs> finish whips in general. Um, so I have some of my work in progress things categorized and clumped into little bags and baskets in the closet um, and I need to get more of them finished so I'll say that if I finish five of those from the closet by December then I will have succeeded that I actually have started tackling them and when I'm like in between projects or like I don't feel like designing something myself um, I'll reach in there and grab um, my queen cow from Tina um, that is also a really fun, easy pattern that I like to work on when I'm just like, okay, I'm just chilling, watching TV, I need something that is like somewhat challenging but not too difficult that I can't look away from it to see Taskmaster because that's all I do now is watch Taskmaster. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have a bus blanket I need to finish. I have a blanket that I literally made all the squares. I just have to sew them together and do the border. That's another one of Tina's patterns. Um, and then I think there's a few things in there that I need to frog. And that technically counts as completing a project because then the project's life cycle is over because it's dead. I also want to try making a hexagon cardigan because I haven't in a while. This was also inspired by my uh, like cleaning out my parents' house, my old room video. Um, I really liked the style and fit of the Karen cake one that I made forever ago, but it was brown. And I'm not, I don't like brown, but I don't usually go for brown when I get dressed. So I was thinking maybe with my scraps I could make it um, and see how that goes. So that's on the list of whips. Well, it's not a whip yet, but it's on the list of maybes for this year. I also got a lot of that chenille yarn and it's all categorized into one bin because I like to categorize and organize but now it's under my little work table over here and it's not that it's hard to get to but just that I don't really get to it so I'm gonna make it a goal to use some of that to create patterns um, and then sell what I make with it obviously uh, and yeah, that's most of my goals for this year. I think the only like overarching one is just use what I have when possible. And I, I normally do that, but I, I was wanting to like really hold myself accountable and be like, don't buy stuff just cause it says there's a sale. 
unless you walk in with the intent to buy something, don't get it just because it's on sale. And like, I actually already put that into practice today because I have a commission and it was buy three, get one free or something like that. I only got the one I needed to get. And guess what? I only spent two bucks because I used a coupon on one yarn and then I didn't spend 20 or 30 dollars which is good because then I have 20 or 30 dollars for when I go to France so yeah if you have any bucket list items that you're wanting to work on this upcoming year feel free to tell me about them in the comments like I said I love comments I did my makeup so that you would maybe consider writing me a comment so if you would do that that would be a good trade and I'll keep making you some fun videos and I'll see you in the next one bye